tell me uh, the concept behind this amazing thing where people walk into perfect strangers' homes and, and there's art being made. I mean, the idea of that is, is almost stunning. It's really unique. <laughs> it is it? unique. Yeah, you don't get yeah, that. And you don't know. Uh, you don't know that there's all this magic inside these houses. You just pass by in the neighborhoods and you don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know, there are artists all over the place in every neighborhood of Portland. And um, so what Portland Open Studios is all about is the public's opportunity to visit with the artists that um, have gone through a jurying process and have have an inclination to share the the amazing and special and intimate spaces of their studios. And we'll go into your studio here in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> but that is like, if I had, if I thought, I have to open up my house, I'd have to clean it up. How yeah. <laughs> I'd have to yeah, brush my well, dogs and wash them and groom a them. A lot of artists <laughs> see it as a... As Opportunity. A, mm -hmm, a challenge, too. Yeah. <laughs> to, but yet yeah. they're willing to do that, so that's really part oh, of the deal. Sure. Yeah. Well, a lot of us really care about the educational side, and, you know, we really care about making our process um, visible to and the available. public, yeah. available, and um, you know, so Portland Open Studios is a non-profit uh, with an educational mission, and so what's wonderful about that is that instead of being focused on the objects themselves, we're more focused on the process and the education around the process, and uh, the, the sort of the business side of things as well. So what is the real everyday life of a working artist? And, um, you know, the challenges and the joys and being able to share that with the public is really pretty amazing for us. And basically the neighborhood is... All of the all metro of, area. All of the metro area. So yeah. there's a great catalog that goes with it. Uh, best best uh, kind of a way to navigate that, your best advice on that, because there's a lot to look at. I've eyeballed those rings. I keep on seeing these beautiful silver rings, <laughs> yeah. and I want to go visit that artist. <laughs> well, <laughs> so beautiful. Well, yeah. I mean, you can, you can buy... So it's a ticketed event. Uh -huh. There are three forms of ticket. The $15 ticket is a full-color, very very nicely produced um, tour guide and catalog which has images of ev of the work of all the different artists and there are artists working in every visual arts media mm -hmm. um, medium and so that's that's one way that is also itemized by uh, by type of medium right whether it be f um, ceramics uh, yeah. that you do or Paintings or jewelry making or glass blowing, yeah. it's all there. Yeah, so there's, a, there's mm -hmm. an index of yeah. sorts. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a cheaper version, which is the map only tour guide, which is simply the bare bones, and that's $5. You know, it's very, very affordable to um, all kinds of people. <laughs> and then over <laughs> and those so four days, uh, you can sort of pick and choose, and there are hours, and yeah. you. And the artist will be expecting your knock on the door. Well, yeah, what I'm, well, I'm just really, really determined to be um, an artist who's making, uh, well, a potter, a craftsperson, to differentiate in this great triangle of artist and craftsperson and designer. I play multiple roles, but I'm really, fo I really love to just make the work myself. I really love the nature of my material, which is porcelain, and awesome fire, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Where is your kiln, by the way? It's it's out behind yeah. my awesome landlady's backyard. Mm, yeah. And we're so looking we can at see that later, yeah, too. And, and this is some... my kitchen. It's full of... Um, Usable art. There we go. Pots made by people that I have known for a decade. Um, students, teachers, peers. Um, and this is, you know, when I entertain, I say, pick your... Like I the, like yeah. I actually did. There's my cup yep. of there's my cup of water yep. right there. Made by this amazing person. And you know, like every piece has a memory for me. And so my life is amazingly rich um, because I'm I'm every day I'm using a little piece of the maker when I make tea and I have my dinner and I 
you know, mm -hmm. share with friends. It's mm -hmm. just an amazing um, process. Okay. And we're, you're in process here with a cup yeah. you're making. So this is essentially a blank. Um, it's, it's about this much clay that I've formed into a cup. It's funny because I was looking at those and thought, are you going to have potatoes for dinner? And <laughs> those are indeed balls of clay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so I've, I've smoothed the surface much like this. And with these two ribs, I'm also, you can see, expanding it. Uh, in the process of expansion, I am creating a structural strength, mostly in the way that clay has a certain shape and the particles need to be aligned in order to be strong. Um, and I, you know, what's, <laughs> what's super sweet about this particular wheel, in addition to having a good alignment for my spine, which leads to um, my ability to do this for decades, I also have a metronome. Just look down there for a moment, and you can see how the, the foot power ticking back and forth mm -hmm. is connected to the rotation of the wheel in such a way that every single time my foot is in one position, the clay is in the same position. And so I can, this is, this is very unique to my work. I can expand the piece asymmetrically to create a very unusual organic asymmetry in a way that most potters would struggle. We have to walk all the way through the backyard and... Yeah, okay. <laughs> that I love so much. Did you build it? I did build it. I designed it and built it. And there's this big chimney that's going up. Yeah. So this is the Tin Man. He's a very innovative kiln actually because not only is it a very um, efficient shape for the way that flame moves through, um, through a chamber, but it runs on not just wood but also waste vegetable oil. And so it's an extremely ecologically responsible kiln. <laughs> and, I'm very, and it fires really well, too. Um, so it's not just smart, it's also going to produce a beautiful and reliable result, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> so, um, so this kiln takes about two and a half days to fire. It's a group process. I share the space with my crew, um, and most of the work that goes through this kiln is utilitarian, so useful pottery fired to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's dramatic, it's wonderful, we all talk and tell stories and share food and have a great time together, in addition to getting this very important task completed. So this holds about... 300 pots. The uh, the pots are stacked in here. Post, 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 shelf, shelf, post, post, shelf, shelf, all the way up. Yeah, I can see those holes right there, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's art. That's uh, engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Green, it's so great to see you again. It Thank really you. is. Wonderful to be here, to show you around.